Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be answering the question why is everybody using inverted fullbacks? Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash the like button, check out SofaScore, but let's get this party started. Famously, fullbacks were always one of the least important positions in football, and professionals were often converted wingers or centre backs. But in the modern era, the fullback has become one of the most important positions on the pitch. In recent years, all of the very best teams have had a pair of world class fullbacks. From Luis Enrique's treble winning Barcelona team, who used Dani Alves and Jordi Alba, to Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool, who've played at the very top level thanks to flying fullbacks Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold. And you can't forget about Real Madrid's triple Champions League winners who had Danny Carvajal and Marcelo. Fullbacks have become so important because as defending teams look to defend as a compact unit and block out the centre of the pitch, traditional fullback areas are generally the furthest away from the goal, so these players have more time and space to operate in. To exploit this, more of the top teams who dominate the ball began deploying more and more attack-minded players with greater technical skills in these positions. This has culminated in Liverpool fullback duo Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold reaching half a century of Premier League assists in 153 and 189 appearances fewer than Leighton Baines respectively. Always the innovator, Pep Guardiola championed the next evolution of fullbacks when he introduced the inverted role to the Premier League. Initially, his Man City side would use Alexander Zinchenko and Carl Walker to move into midfield and create a solid central base. This in turn would allow his attacking midfielders, David Silva and Kevin De Bruyne, to adopt more advanced positions whilst his speedy wingers would stretch the pitch horizontally and vertically. Guardiola's complete control over matches and his introduction of such a foreign concept to the Premier League allowed his teams to totally dominate the competition, leading to Manchester City recording the highest ever points total in a single season. Since then, Guardiola has continued to evolve his style and structure, but some form of inverted fullback has always been present. Last season saw Joao Cancelo become a creative force as an inverted left wing back who would often join the attacking unit in the final third. He finished the season with the second most assist for Man City. Even this season, we've seen Guardiola move away from Cancelo's attacking role, instead preferring a solid base created by deploying four natural centre-backs in a back four, using one of them to create a midfield two with Rodri. Last season, Guardiola was the only Premier League manager who used inverted fullbacks in most matches, but this season, there are four more teams in the competition who have adopted inverted fullbacks. At Arsenal former Guardiola fullback Zinchenko is playing a similar inverted role under Guardiola disciple Mikel Arteta, creating a midfield two with Thomas Partey. At Brighton, Joel Veltman is often inverting into midfield to free up a central midfielder. At Liverpool, Trent Alexander Arnold is stepping into right central midfield. And at Manchester United, we've seen both fullbacks narrow alongside Casemiro at times. But against Nottingham Forest, Diogo Dolo thrive from left back by creating a double pivot alongside the number six. Whilst Guardiola has most recently settled on using John Stones in this role, not only from fullback inverting from right back, but also playing as a false centre back against Bayern Munich in the Champions League, defending in a back four, but then moving into that midfield area with Rodri in possession. So why have we seen such an explosion of Premier League sides adopting some kind of inverted fullback role? Firstly, by inverting into midfield, fullbacks are able to provide an easy numerical overload in central areas, which helps to give their team control of the match. Often this inverted movement creates a midfield box of four players which outnumbers the most popular formations in central areas. Secondly, by using an inverted fullback to create a dynamic double pivot, you're asking questions of the opposition. The player responsible for the inverted fullback is generally always the winger or wide player, but if the fullback moves into midfield, what does the winger do? Do they hold the defensive structure of a team but leave the fullback unmarked or do they track the fullback inside creating in a hole in their shape. If they choose the latter, passing lanes can be open to play direct to the wingers, which allows for easy but very effective ball progression. But if they choose the former, the inverted fullback is the spare man and allows for very simple, albeit short and safe progression option. Generally, what happens in the game is that when the fullback inverts, they are picked up by the opposition's forwards or strikers. For example, when pressed by a 4-4-2, the centre forward will have to deal with and screen the double pivots. So when a creative fullback inverts into a double pivot, they actually have more space due to the lack of defensive awareness of forwards. More time and space for technical and creative players often allows them to play through 
with more expansive long balls or one twos. A great example of this is Darwin Nunez's goal in the 6-1 win over Leeds, where Trent Alexander-Arnold has very little pressure and was able to measure his lofted pass to the Uruguayan. What's more is that by starting with a single pivot made up of one defensive midfielder but creating a double pivot by having a player moving into that zone, you can create variety in your build-up play without sacrificing your structure. For example, in a 4-3-3, you can create a double pivot by having one of the fullbacks invert, like we mentioned before, which can cause the eights to advance. But you could also have the fullback stay wide with an eight dropping in to create the pivot. This unpredictability can create hesitation in the opponent, which can often give the players in the double pivot more time to receive and progress the play, compared to a fixed double pivot, which is always made up of the same two players. However, the drawback to this is that it requires a high level of coaching and tactical understanding understanding to pull off effectively. Thirdly, by pushing midfield players into advanced areas, inverted fullbacks can allow a manager to field more attack-minded players in their starting 11. The most famous example in the Premier League is Guardiola's Centurions that we've already mentioned. But more recently, we've seen Deserby's Brighton invert Veltman to allow Pascal Gross to move into attacking midfield. We also saw Eric Ten Hag use Diogo Delo as an inverted left-back, which allowed Christian Eriksen to join Bruno Fernandes in attacking midfield. This caused major problems problems for Nottingham Forest midfield too, who struggled to deal with United's creative midfielders. In fact, Fernandez and Eriksen actually completed more final third passes in the second half than Nottingham Forest managed as a team. And finally, by creating a strong midfield presence like a midfield box, inverted fullbacks allow their team to create good structures for counter-pressing. What's more is that because fullbacks are generally better defenders than central or attacking midfielders, their response to their team losing possession is genuinely strong and aggressive. Jurgen Klopp has recently trialled Trent Alexander-Arnold in a more inverted position, which has helped to rejuvenate their counter-press by adding more energy in central areas. But it's also helped out Trent's own defensive game, who's winning on average 3.5 tackles per 90 as an inverted fullback, compared to just 1.82 per 90 in a more traditional role. Trent's inverted position is also reducing his weakness that are exposed at fullback, as his technical skills have far more chance to shine from central areas, whilst defensively, right-sided centre-back Ibrahim Kanate is doing a lot more 1v1 defending, which gets the best out of both players' skill sets. The benefits of using inverted fullbacks that we have mentioned are all desired by managers who want to dominate the ball. And with an influx of possession-focused managers arriving in the Premier League, inverted fullbacks will only become more common. But it's not just English football that are hopping on the inverted fullback train. Some of the biggest and best teams around Europe also adding fullbacks to create an extra midfielder. Spalletti's Napoli have used Di Lorenzo as an inverted right-back at times, and Ancelotti's Real Madrid have used central midfielder Eduardo Camavinga Vinga as a left back. In fact, Los Blancos have lost just one of their matches that Camavinga has started in that position, scoring 26 goals, conceding 6 and averaging 63.1% possession, more than their seasonal averages. Modern football is constantly evolving, but surprisingly, it's also followed the trend of the early days of football formations. Five years ago, the 2-3-5 was the most popular attacking structure in Europe, which is basically the original pyramid from the 1880s. The next evolution in the modern game has evolved inverted fullbacks creating a 3-2-5, which is the WM created by Herbert Chapman in the 1920s. Following the WM, we saw an MM system, and if modern football continues down this development pathway, the next most popular tactical trend could see the return of two striker systems. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will the inverted fullback continue to rise in popularity or is it a one season anomaly? Let me know in the comments below, check out SofaScore, subscribe if you're new and we'll see you later. Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed this video why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel.